It is the 8th of June, 2023. Thanks for watching the Calvary Briefing today. It is the month of June, and in America, the LGBTQ religion is taking hold in a powerful way. And as followers of Jesus Christ, we wonder how we should live in this extremely uncomfortable environment. Author Jonathan Lehman listed recently seven biblical texts that he believes we as followers of Christ should look at as we go through this month of June uh, with all of the flags and all of the signs and all of the focus that we will face on a daily basis. Text number one is Mark 12, verses 29 through 31. In everything you do, love. One of the scribes came up to Jesus. He heard an argument, and he said to Jesus, which is the most important command of all? And Jesus answered, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the, God, the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There's no other commandment greater than these. In everything you do this month, love. Text number two. Actually, a couple of texts from the Gospel of John. John 14, verses 15, 21, 23, and 24. If you love me, Jesus says, you will keep my commandments. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. As soon as we say, do everything with love, secondly, we must distinguish God's love from the love of the world. We need to be reminded that love in the Bible always works together with righteousness, obedience, and truth. Love, according to Paul in 1 Corinthians 16, does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. A third text, Exodus 20, 16. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Never lie. Many situations at school or perhaps at work may place you in an uncomfortable situation in which it seems that lying might be the easy way out. Christians should not lie. Short-term gains never outweigh long-term compromises. Oftentimes, silence is acceptable. We don't have to speak up and give our opinion on every issue all the time. Fourth, Ephesians 5.11 and Romans 1.32 never affirm evil. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them, Paul writes to the believers in Ephesus in chapter 5, verse 11. And then in Romans 1.32, he writes, Though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. And everyday rationale that Christians offer for going with the cultural flow uh, is that, well, not everyone in my circle is a follower of Jesus, a, a Christian, and so we can't impose our morality on them. That counsel can be correct at times, but yet, just as you should never lie, so you should never participate in the unfruitful works of darkness, and you should never give approval to anything that provokes God's judgment. Just because co-workers, classmates, and colleagues decided to approve sin doesn't mean that you should not that you should do the same thing. Abstain, pull back, keep your hands off anything that might commend sin and provoke God's end time judgment. Sixth, 
1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 9 through 11. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Paul writes to the Corinthians. Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral or idolaters, nor, adult, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. Remember what you were, but no longer are by the gospel. Sometimes our moral compasses get a little wobbly. And for all of us wobblers out there, Paul's words here set the record straight. It puts steel in our spines. It draws clear moral lines for our members and also reminds us that the gospel is God's truth. A final passage, Romans 14, 13. Therefore, do not pass judgment on one another any longer, but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of a brother. Do not pass judgment on one another. As believers, we are called to make judgments, but we are called to not be judgmental. When the challenging dilemmas come to us at work, at school, at the coffee shop, at the grocery store, it won't always be clear how all of these texts from the Bible work in that specific situation. We need to constantly be in prayer for God's wisdom in applying these seven texts and, of course, many, many others. But thankfully, we are a part of a church, and this church body is ready to talk to you as you navigate through this month. Thank you.